Good afternoon. Yeah, <clears throat> one second, please. Ooh. All right. See if this works today. I don't remember what the button is. It's not. All right. Today we're working on React and Redux challenges. The series of challenges introduces how to use Redux with React. In a React Redux app, you create a single Redux store that manages the state of your entire app. React components subscribe to only the pieces of data in the store that are relevant to their role. Then you dispatch actions directly from React components, which then trigger store update. Go to the first lesson. I want to turn the music up for myself a little bit. term i term can actually be minimized we don't need that up thank you um stream labels this isn't stream label this is on the desktop let's Sorry about that. Let's just move in the mic. All right, getting started with React Redux. The series of challenges introduces how to use Redux with React. First, here's a review of some of the key principles of each technology. React is a view library that you provide with data, then it renders the view in an efficient, predictable way. Redux is a state management framework that you can use to simplify the management of your application state. Typically in a React Redux app, you create a single Redux store that manages the state of your entire app. Your React components subscribe to only the pieces of data in the store that are relevant to their role. Then you dispatch, dispatch actions directly from React components, which then triggers store update. The React components can manage their own state locally. When you have a complex app, it's generally better to keep the app state in a single location with Redux. There are exceptions when individual components may have local states specific only to them. Finally, because Redux is not designed to work with React out of the box, you need to use the React Redux package. It provides a way for you to pass Redux state and dispatch your to your React components as props. Over the next few challenges, first you'll create a simple React component which allows you to input new text messages. 
There are added. These are added to an array that's displayed in the view. This should be a nice review of what you learned in the React lessons. Next, you'll, cre you'll create a Redux store and actions that manage the state of the messages array. Finally, you'll use Re React Redux to connect to the Redux store with your component, thereby extracting the local state into the Redux store. With a display messages component, add a constructor to this component and initialize it with a state that has two properties, input that's set to an empty string and messages that's set to an empty array. Alright, well I don't remember anything from the React lessons. <clears throat> we have our class here, extends the React component, we have our render, Need a constructor. Should call super on that. Initialize it with a state that has two properties. Input equals and messages, which is going to default to an empty array. I believe that's it. Is that it? Survey message should be called properly with super passing and props. Can I read property input of null? We Oh, uh, that's right. Alright, so I think we have to do this. It's asking. Identifier expected. this because I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to see code. Awesome. Save. 
eight in life, so I, that might be it. So we need to pass in props, and then we pass in props here, parent class, and this state equals, and this is where we put it's on its own line. All right, I vaguely remember this. No. Okay. React and Redux manage state locally first. Here you'll finish creating the display messages component. First in the render method, have the component render an input element, button element, and UL element. When the input element changes, it should trigger a handle change method. Also the input element should render the add value of input that's in the component state. The button element should trigger a submit message method when it's clicked. Second, write these two methods. The handle change method should update the input with what the user is typing. The submit message method should concatenate the current message stored in input to the messages array in local state and clear the value of the input. Finally, use the UL to map over the array of messages and render it to the screen as a list of li elements. All right, so we have that we set up before, add handle change, and submit message methods. So we've done that, and we'll have to add the stuff into it later. Um, it wants us to render an input button and UL here.
Alrighty. That's how you set state. I was looking for that. change method should update the input with what the user is typing bit message method should concatenate that message with an input to the messages array in the local state here's the value of input hmm. Well, it wants us to do input. element How you do it? Um, not. Let's see here. Handling events. So this handle change um, we're gonna put these on their own lines. Let's see here what else do we have? Um, the button element should trigger a submit message method when it's clicked. Do not click. Let's 
that smooth message. Uh, let's work on this part here. Handle change. Method should update the input with what the user is typing. Uh, so we have our on change method. Method. set state is what we want. We don't return it though. Alright, so we don't return it. This set state. And we can, I believe we can just put in the one thing we want to change. So input Past here, I believe. I believe. Yep. So, event. Move on to the next one. Second, okay, so submit message method should concatenate the current message stored in input to the messages array in local state and clear the value of input. So input is going to be cleared, right? Messages is going to be this state messages. I remember yesterday we used the empty array. Shouldn't have to, right? This makes a new array. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, hmm. So here we can set up the list items. And we're gonna state map. We're gonna pass along the item. And we are going to return. sure if I need this or not. And some sort of air. Let's open up the console here. Um, let's put it on the bottom. State map is not a function. We fix that. Copy this and do a refresh. No errors so far.
Mm -hmm. Property set state of undefined. All those have to be bound, don't they? This handle change equals this handle change find this. Then this submit message equals this submit message. So we're getting something. Um, does this perhaps need to be wrapped? No, I don't think so. Item undefined. Fuck, I need a new chair. Let's see if we change this a bit. What are you complaining about? Messages map is not a function because it's not an array. That makes sense. All right. What if we did it the way that Fine. 
for the form stacks. Event target value. stay up all right so I'm gonna look at the curriculum See if I can't find the lesson that I'm thinking of. And react. this one not this one maybe use this one new ah right here Here we go. All 
All right, we forgot this part, I think. Um, so yeah, for this, we have, we don't have the value bound. We need the value bound to this state input. So that way, when we set the state here to be cleared, it should clear it. So that works. Test, test, test. Alright, this, okay, so it almost, almost worked. Let's take a look at this. Nivanos with the raid, seven people. What up, Nivanos? What up, Unite X? What are you guys doing today? Thank you so much for the raid. All right. So they're strings. We don't want them to be strings. Um. is gonna work it might work if we wrap this no I am well man I hope you're well too if you enjoy your walk Get us a good stretch in. I hope your stream was was good. I need to move this mic down a little bit, I think. Alright, so we have our UL here. We're trying to put out the list items that we're generating up here, and it's not quite working. Um, I'm going to close this again. So they're strings. Why are they strings and not actual elements? Mm. Lists and keys. This has This just has a hmm Maybe Here we go now. Oh, this is the wrong page. So this, <clears throat> the example they give, they don't use the full string shortcut thing. Um, I think maybe here we would use it to generate. Yes, okay, we're on the right track. So now, that's right, JSX or whatever, they'll read the HTML without any fancy strings. But I remember in the one lesson we used the fancy string to create key. Um, we only have an index. We don't really have a way to create a hash with this. So I think this is fine. Okay, we're almost there. Um, dollar sign. Oops. 
Oh. Alright, that's why. I think that should be a thing, but it is. Alright, let's see if our tests pass now. Yes, they do. Raise the roof. Now that you've finished the React component, you need to move the logic it's performing. Uh... Now that you've finished the React component, you need to move the logic it's performing locally in the, its state into Redux. This is the first step to connect this simple React app to Redux. The only functionality your app has is to add new messages from the user to an unordered list. The example is simple in order to demonstrate how React and Redux work together. First, def define an action type add and set it to a constant add. Next, define an action creator add message, which creates the action to add a message. You need to pass a message to this action creator and include the message in the return action. Then create a reducer called message reducer that handles the state for the messages. So this the initial state should equal an empty array. This reducer should add a message to the array of messages held in state or return the current state. Finally, create your Redux store and pass it to the reducer. Okay. Uh, why not key equals in the previous component? Um, only because I was thinking about a previous lesson where we created a more complex hash um, and not just use, using the index. So yeah, I mean, you're right. We could have just passed in the index by itself. I was thinking of something else. Didn't really want to undo the work since the test passed anyway. to find an action type add let's see here so we need our constant remember this part constant add equals add i believe that's, that's all that needs need add message a message to this action creator and include the message in the return to action. Again, I don't really remember anything from the Redux lessons. So the basics. Actions, reducers, store. Go to actions. I got that part right. It's just a string. creator we're up here so I will pass the message and this is where we return the state object with the action type wait or is it just type it's just type type use our constant and then I believe passed the message. How are you doing today, Okev? Ok Ev. All right. Um. Create a reducer called message reducer 
So let's look at the reducer docks. Um, So we have our message reducer. Um, initial state should equal an empty array. So we can do state equals empty array. Producer should add a message to the array of messages held in state or return the current state. So this is where we have our switch statement. Um, and we want to what, pass the action, I believe, is the second parameter. Yes. Okay. We have our switch and we're looking at action type. And if the case is add, we're going to do the following stuff. Um, we'll just do a return here so we don't have to break. And then we have our default, which will return state. Okay, so that's handled. Now we just need to handle what happens when we are actually adding message. And the state, so it should just add it to this array. Uh, action message is what we do. This is the object. Oh no. Um, this is the object here. We have our type, that's how we get the type. And then we have our message. So, yeah, action. Finally, create your Redux store and pass it to the reducer. Only remember how to do that. I think it's just reduct.store. Okay, so we'll have yeah, Redux create store. We just do Redux create store. And we pass it to message reducer. Run our tests and see add message is not defined. Um don't need multiple lets we can actually just do a comma or it's not um, same here we could just do a comma sweet
pull up the FTL drive. What does that mean? I don't know. Use provider to connect Redux to React. In the last challenge, you created a Redux store to handle the messages array and created an action for adding new messages. Next step is to provide React access to the Redux store and the actions it needs to dispatch updates. React Redux provides its React Redux package to help accomplish these tasks. React Redux provides a small API with two key features, provider and connect. Another challenge covers connect. Provider is a wrapper component from React Redux that wraps your React app. This wrapper then allows you to access the Redux store, dispatch functions throughout your component tree. Provider takes two props, the Redux store and the child components of your app. Defining the provider for an app component might look like this. Editor now shows all your Redux and React code from the past several challenges. It includes the Redux store, actions, and the display messages component. The only new piece is the app wrapper component at the bottom. Use the top level component to render the provider from React Redux and pass the Redux store as a prop. Then render the display messages component as a child. Once you are finished, you should see your React component rendered to the page. No, React Redux is available as a global variable here, so you can access the provider with that notation. Code in the editor takes advantage of this and sets it to a constant provider for you to use in the app wrapper render method. Okay. Alright, so. React code. We have our app wrapper. Extends React. Under the provider here. piece is the app wrapper at the bottom use this top level component to render the provider from react redux and pass the redux store as a prop then render the display messages component as a child So can we do this since it's... I guess we're going to find out. I think we need to render function. Yeah, we, we do, I guess this does create like a component, the React Redux provider. It probably says that somewhere in here, and now I just glossed over it. Alright. So that's how you connect Redux to React with the React Redux 
provider. All right, try to remember that. I will try to remember that. Yep, state to prox. The provider's component allows you to provide state and dispatch to your RAT component, but you must specify exactly what state and actions you want. This way you make sure that each component only has access to the state it needs. You accomplish this by creating two functions, map state to props and map dispatch to props. In these functions you declare what pieces of state you want to have access to and which action creators you need to be able to dispatch. Once these functions are in place, you'll see how to use the React Redux connect method to connect them to your components in another challenge. Behind the scenes, React Redux uses the store subscribe method to implement map state to props. Create a function of map state to props. This function should take state as an argument, then return an object which maps the state to a specific property name. These properties will become accessible by your component via prop. Since this example keeps the entire state of the app in a single array, you can pass the entire state to your component. Create a property messages in the object that's being returned and set it to state. Create a function map. Let's see here, let map state to props equal function. That is this. Um, this function should take state as an argument, then return an object which maps that state to a specific to specific property names. Okay. This takes state as an argument and then returns an object. So let's return the object. I'm going to have a messages property on it that is set to the state because that is all the state we have to worry about. Alright. Got it. Map dispatch to props. Map dispatch to props function is used to provide specific action creators to your react components so they can dispatch actions against the redux store it's similar in structure to the map state to props function you wrote in the last challenge it returns an object that maps dispatch actions to property names which become component props however instead of returning a piece of state each property returns a function that calls dispatch with an action creator and any relevant action data you have access to this dispatch because it's passed in the into map dispatch props as a parameter when you define the function, just like you pass state to map state to props. Behind the scenes, React Redux is using Redux's store dispatch to conduct these dispatches with map dispatch props. This is similar to how it uses store subscribe for components that are mapped to state. For example, you have a login user action creator that takes a username as an action payload. Object returned from the map dispatch to props for the action. This action creator would look something like this. Init login user uh, with the function username and then it dispatches it. Okay. Code editor provides an action creator called add message. Write the function map dispatch to props that takes dispatch as an argument then returns an object. The object should have a new property submit new message set to the dispatch function, which takes a parameter for the new message to add when it dispatches add message. All right. So we need to create a new function. Let um, map dispatch to props equal function that takes dispatch. Um, Then we have our submit new message property. And 
to the dispatch function. So this is going to dispatch. Um, we use the add message function that they provided for us with the message. function that takes it. So let me just do message I believe that's it oh, it needs to return oh okay Here it has to return the object inside that object. Okay. Right. I am the king of the world. Next, Redux to React. Now that you're, you've written both the map state to props and the map dispatch to props functions, you can use them to map state and dispatch to the props of one of your React components. The next method from React Redux can handle this task. This method takes two optional arguments, map state to props and map dispatch to props. They are optional because you may have a component that only needs access to state but doesn't need to dispatch any actions or vice versa. You use this method to pass in the functions as arguments and immediately call the result with your component. This syntax is a little unusual and looks like this. Okay, so it's just uh, auto whatever. You want to admit one of the arguments to the connect method, you pass null in its place. Alright. Code editor has map state to props and map dispatch to props functions and a new React component called presentational. Connect this component to Redux with the connect method from the Redu React Redux global object and call it immediately on the presentational component. Find the result to a new const called connected component that represents the connected component. That's it. Now you're connected to Redux. Try changing either of connect's arguments to null and observe the results. So we have our add message, map state to props, map dispatch to props. <clears throat> so we're going to use the connect here, change the code, so we use connect. And what component? We're adding it to the presentational. This is a presentational component, okay. to test these with null in each place I guess just to see that it fails to do the things yes <clears throat> uh, let's see here 
connect Redux to the Messages app. Now that you understand how to use Connect to connect Re React to Redux, you can apply that what you've learned to your React component that handles messages. In the, uh, the last lesson, the component you connected to Redux was named Presentational, and this wasn't arbitrary. This term generally refers to React components that are not directly connected to Redux. They are simply responsible for the presentation of UI and do this as a function of the props they receive. By contrast, container components are connected to Redux. These are typically responsible for dispatching actions in the store and often pass store state to child components as props. Code editor has all of the code you've written in this section so far. The only change is that the React component is renamed to presentational. Create a new component held in the constant called container that uses connect to connect the presentational component to Redux. Then in the app wrapper, render the React Redux provider component. Pass provider the Redux store as a prop and render container as a child. Once everything is set up, you'll see the message app rendered to the page again. All right, let's find out where are we doing code to find the container component here. Um, held in a constant, so this is going to be called container. It uses connect. So, <clears throat> how did we do this? Connect. And there we go, map state. Let's do the map. State to props and map. Dispatch to props. Do we not do this? Find out. All right. Um, complete the return statement. Um, then in the app wrapper, render the React Redux provider component. So we would do provider. Ask provider the Redux store as a prop. Render container as a child. Provider, the store, the container um, is taking what the provider is given and binding it to the container, I believe is what's happening. So this is the part that we didn't do. We need to map the stuff, not amp it. And then it should work. Alright. Cool. Extract local state into Redux. You're almost done. Recall that you wrote all the Redux code so that Redux could control the state management of your React Messages app. Now that Redux is connected, you need to extract the state management out of the presentational component and into Redux. Currently, you have Redux connected, but you're handling the state locally within the presentational component. In the presentational component, first remove the messages property in the local state. Um, so we're going to take this out. These messages will be managed by Redux. Next, modify the submit message method so that it dispatches submit new message 
from this prompt and pass in the current message input from the local state as an argument. By the submit message right here, so that it dispatches submit new message from this props. So this props um, submit new message. This prop submit new message and pass in the current message input from the local state as an argument. So I believe we take all this out. Because you remove messages from local state, remove the messages properly from the call to set state here as well. Okay, so I think we leave that actually. submit new message and this state input current I believe that's what we do uh, this one uh, uses redux this is the local store state finally modify the render method so that it maps over the messages received from props rather than state changes are made the app will continue to function the same except Redux manages the state. This example also illustrates how a component may have local state. Your component still tracks user input locally in its own state. You can see how Redux provides a useful state management framework on top of React. You achieve the same result using only React's local state at first. This is usually possible with simple apps. However, as your apps become larger and more complex, so does your state management, and this is the problem Redux solves. Let's run the tests. Down the rabbit hole we go. Uh, React and Redux moving forward from here. Congratulations! You finished lessons on React and Redux. There's one last item worth pointing out before you move on. Typically you won't write React apps in a code editor like this. This challenge gives you a glimpse of what the syntax looks like if you're working with NPM and a file system on your own machine. The code should look similar except for the use of import statements these pull in all the dependencies that have been provided for you in the challenge. The managing packages with npm section covers npm in more detail. Finally, writing React and Redux code generally requires some configuration. This can get complicated quickly. If you're interested in experimenting on your own machine, the Create React app comes configured and ready to go. Alternatively, you can enable Babel as a JavaScript preprocessor in CodePen and add React and React DOM as external JavaScript resources and work there as well. Log the message and now I know React and Redux to the console. Okay. Now I know React and Redux. Pass with flying colors. Awesome. So tomorrow, I believe, we'll start building these projects here. Awesome. All right, guys. 
that's it for me. Been real. Well, that was uh, inter that was interesting. Um, basically, forgot everything from last week. But that's okay. We got through it. I'll be back later tonight, 8 p.m. EST, for some Clash Royale. Um, I'll also be back tomorrow afternoon, where we'll start on the front end libraries projects. We have three, four, five projects to make, and we will finish this section and complete the front-end library certifi certification. So I'm excited for that. I want to say thanks again to Navanos for the raid. You're awesome. I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. I don't see you tonight. Later.